There are four main factors that go into wildlife photography and the two most important ones have nothing to do with gear. The first is time. Hours and hours spent in the field, they turn into weeks and months total time. This time gives you experience, it lets you learn animal behaviors, it lets you find locations where the animals actually are, understand how the different seasons work, how the tides change the behavior of water birds, for example. You'll be watching the phases of the moon and the weather and the rain. Time is the most important factor and the great wildlife photographers, they might have great gear, but the biggest factor is they put in a lot of time. The second most important factor is distance, getting closer and closer and closer to your subject. Experience helps you get closer without disturbing them. Things like camouflage lets me get maybe 25% closer. The third most important factor are lenses. And if you go from 400 millimeters to 500 millimeters, you're gonna go from spending $1,300 to six or $10,000. I get about the same extra reach out of some camo. You can spend a whole lot on a lens and big prime lenses like this one are real, real expensive. They will make a difference, but getting closer is always the better option because a big lens won't overcome atmospheric conditions, humidity in, in the air. The further you are, the less sharp you're gonna get no matter what kind of glass you have. But if you can get close, even a 70 to 300 lens will produce great results. The last factor here is the camera body. And that's what we're talking about today, because I have the brand new Canon 5 DSR with 50 megapixels and no anti-aliasing filter. So it should be the very best wildlife camera in existence. Nothing else has so many megapixels. Even in the medium format world, you can get more megapixels, but you can't get big telephoto lenses. This should be the very best camera in the world. But for most of us, it's not. Because there are other factors too. When you start to look at the camera body, it's not all about megapixels. You have to talk, talk about the focusing system because the greatest wildlife shots aren't animals who are standing still, but they're animals living, moving, things like birds in flight. And this camera has a good focusing system, but that and the 7D Mark II or the 1DX, they're both better. And both those cameras have a much higher frame rate, shooting at 10 frames a second with the 7D Mark II versus only five frames a second on this. So you get twice as many shots. And when a bird is coming towards you, the more shots you get, the better your odds are that one's going to be perfectly sharp and have the wings in just the right position so that they're not casting a shadow on the bird's face. Having twice as many frames will make a huge difference. The buffer on this is also pretty weak too, running out of raw shots in 12 or 13 frames. Whereas the 5D Mark III, the previous generation of this, I used to get about 33 frames before I ran out of buffer. And when a bird is coming towards you, you need to be shooting for five or six seconds. So it gets to be really difficult to manage those frames. You start forcing yourself to wait until the bird gets closer and closer and closer before you start hitting that shutter. So the 5DSR isn't the best for birds in flight. Is it the best for still subjects? Slower moving animals like lions on a safari or small perched songbirds? Well. The pixels are pretty amazing, but you actually get more pixel density with a Canon T6i. It's got 24 megapixels, whereas if you put a 1.6 crop on this, you end up with right about 20 megapixels. It's pretty close to the 7D Mark II as far as detail goes in those situations where you have to crop. Now, ideally, you get yourself a big 500 millimeter lens and you fill the frame with your subject. But realistically, that's pretty rare, especially with the animals that most of us are shooting, because most of us aren't shooting giraffes and elephants and lions. Most of us are shooting things like songbirds or osprey, and they don't let you get that close. Songbirds, they're so small that the only way you can fill the frame is if you put about 25 millimeters of extension tube on this, and that puts you about like four feet away from the songbirds, even with a huge lens. And if you're gonna get four feet from a songbird and have it not freak out, you're hiding in a blind, you're masking your scent, you're staying there for hours and hours and hours. You're probably also putting down food, maybe using calls. It's not easy. You have to be really, really committed if you're gonna fill the frame on a full frame camera. So most people will probably get better results, or at least as good results, by using an APS-C body like this T6i, and you'll have over $3,000 extra money in your pocket, because this is 3,900 bucks, and this is 750 bucks. So 
If you spend that $3,000, you could get an awesome lens. This lens here, the 400 millimeter f5.6, I got it used for about a thousand bucks. You could also spend some of that money on a nice trip. Go down to the Everglades, go out to Alaska and get yourself closer to more amazing wildlife. So is the 5DSR the best way to spend your wildlife photography budget? If you're shooting still subjects and you know you can get that close, if you've put those years in, mastered the animal behavior, you know exactly how to hide and fill the frame, then it simply can't be beat. The resolution is unbelievable. It's astounding. The dynamic range allows us to recover shadows that would otherwise be lost when a bird is flying across an overcast sky, or to pull out detail in the dark feathers of an otherwise bright bird, something like an osprey. It's amazing. <laughs> Don't let me say otherwise, but it's not the best for birds in flight. And if your budget is something under like 15 or 20K, you're probably better off putting extra money in the the lens and getting something like this T6i or maybe better yet a used Canon 7D because those crop bodies pull out more detail. If you do feel like checking out the 5DSR we have two other reviews covering landscapes and in-studio portrait work. It's really really amazing in both of those scenarios but for wildlife it might not be for everybody. Thanks, give us a subscribe and a like, share it with your friends and I hope this helped. If you have any questions ask in the comments below.